Welcome to Reanimator Reviews. I'm Rayanne, and today I'm going to talk about Eaten Alive, which is the 1976, I think, film from Toby Hooper. So, the movie starts out um, not, not exactly what I thought it was going to be. It was a really tight shot of uh, Robert England's crotch in denim jeans, and we find out his name is Buck. And he is ready to um, try to do things to a non-consenting Clara. Y you can figure out what the word was. It rhymes with buck. And it's not duck. So. He um, wants to uh, screw her in a very uncomfortable place. Like the back of a Volkswagen, perhaps. And she very vehemently decides that maybe she wasn't cut out to be a sex worker, as she does work in uh, Miss Hattie's brothel. And it's just, it's its not going to work out. She's, it's, it's not her thing. So, she does end up leaving. One of the nicer people at the brothel does give her money and tells her, kind of, walk down the road, you're going to find a place you can stay there for the night. So she ends up going to Judd's hotel, which um, he very proudly has a very large, I think he said it was from Africa, crocodile living in his little swamp around the hotel, as you do when you just keep a random wild animal, I suppose. So she doesn't get very far into the hotel before Judd kind of picks up on her first employer that she just left, and they kind of warned her, like, hey, don't really talk about that you were working here, because, you know, a lot of people aren't going to be taking kindly to that. So he does try to force himself upon her when she fights back. Of course, he dispatches her and then uh, shoves her off to be eaten by the crocodile. There's a random family that shows up not long after this, and um, unfortunately, their dog Snoopy gets eaten by the crocodile, and they go in the hotel. There's a lot of a weird dynamic between the husband and wife, and like right in front of their child, they're just saying like horrible things to each other about each other, and there's that whole drama, as well as uh, Clara the uh, sex worker that was unfortunately eaten by the crocodile. Her father and her sister show up looking for her, find, trying to find any lead, trying to figure out where she is. You get the sense she might have run away. I don't remember if they ever really address why she left the family in the movie because the pacing, the pacing was a bit of an issue for me. I'll go into that further. But, um, yeah. This is a this is a strange movie about a hotel and a crocodile and the things that happen. I'm gonna leave it off here as it is spoiler free. Um, what did I like about this movie? I love to see Robert England in literally every movie because I think that he just people only ever see him as Freddy Krueger and I love to see him in different roles. I loved him in Strangeland, even though you're really not supposed to like his character in Strangeland. I was just really excited to see him. Um, there was a mini series he was on about aliens. I cannot remember what it is. I think it's like one letter. I sound like an idiot. Anyways, super excited to see him in that. Just I, I love Robert England. I've gotten to meet him. He's a really super nice guy. He was like actually disgusting in this movie the way he would treat women and just a gross gritty nastiness and it was always like his character was just really really trying to do this one specific thing that i alluded to we're just not gonna go into that hellbent on it perhaps um I liked the concept of the movie. I liked how gross everything felt. Like, you kind of felt that sticky nastiness you would in a hot, humid place with a bunch of swamps around you. I thought for the time, the uh, creature design for the crocodile wasn't really that bad, and it also helped that a lot of the scenes with the crocodile were shot in really low-light situations, so that kind of helps to you know, cover up any flaws. Like, 
anyone that wears makeup, like, you know if you kind of, like, don't get your eyeshadow blended completely well or things don't turn out how you like. You just throw a pair of lashes on there and it kind of helps it, like, today. Um, that's how I feel about how this movie was lit with the crocodile in particular. So, that was cool. Um, I suppose I'll go into my dislikes. The pacing, as I said, the pacing was off for me, my opinion, because it just seemed like the first, you know, the first act of the movie, it seemed to go rather quickly into the action and then, you know, the chasing and the dispatching. And that was great. Like, I was really on board for it. And then, you know, especially halfway through the movie, I felt like it just started to drag. And keeping my attention, it was hard. It was hard to watch. It was hard just to keep invested in the movie a little bit for me. Especially there's a part, a large part in this movie where that couple I had mentioned, their daughter, you know, has a interaction with Judd and she's running from him and hiding under the house. But it seems like for the entire, like, three quarters of the movie, she's just under the house. Like, that's it. That's would it really take that long? Like, there's other animals in the swamp. Like, I feel like something would find her. But anyways, another one of my dislikes. I thought some of the acting in the movie was kind of terrible. The, the weird things I was saying, the interactions between the couple when they're kind of fighting, when everyone is, you know, grieving over the loss of their dog... The things they were saying to each other and the way that the that Roy, the husband, was acting was just, like, a bit over the top, like, kind of insane. And there was just this sense that Judd, the owner of the hotel and said crocodile, was always sort of muttering and always sort of had this beef with Buck that they never really go into detail about. But, like, I mean, if you know Buck, I suppose you would hate him. But any, like... He just muttering and whispering to himself and, like, giggling creepily. And it was just, like, a bit too hokey for me, which that's rare because I like the cheese. So, um, again, with the acting, the little girl was horrible and her screaming constantly just... I, I, I don't... I don't want to deal with that. <laughs> she wasn't that great of an actress, which is a terrible thing to say about a child actor, but, like, also, like, that's, I suppose, your job. But maybe she grew up and got better. I mean, this is from quite a while ago. So, um, I have some beef with the lighting of the movie. Obviously, this is from the 70s, so things have changed. Film has gotten better. Lighting has gotten better. I just felt like I missed out a lot on the action scenes, particularly in the swamp or outside the house. Even inside the house, it was really not well lit. And I understand that's to build the atmosphere of, you know, probably them feeling secluded and there could be something in the shadows. But as someone that is visually impaired that does not have their full sight, it was really frustrating to try to infer what was happening. There was one part where there was a monkey that was in a cage that I guess, I don't know what happened to it, but it did end up passing away. And I was kind of like, well, wait, what? Why would it just, like, did Judd just mistreat it? Or did it get stung or bitten by something? I'll never know. Do you guys know what happened? Because I was kind of bummed about that monkey because it was super cute. And I hate any kind of violence towards these poor defenseless animals, except for the crocodile, because it was just kind of a cretin. No, that's not fair. It was a crocodile. It was just being a crocodile. Maybe people taste good. I don't know what crocodiles like. I'm not going to judge you, girl. But um, I wish it was better lit so I could have enjoyed everything. And I didn't have the groom home with me today to watch it, although I don't know that he would have to kind of give me an idea of what was happening. He's very, very helpful and understanding that 
my eyes aren't like his eyes and uh he he lets me know what's going on i forgot to rate this movie so uh, i'm just gonna stick this in here i would probably give it like a 2.5 out of 5 there's just certain aspects I didn't enjoy. There's a lot of aspects I did enjoy, and there you have it. So I would probably watch it again, maybe try to find a restored copy if there is one available, maybe to see if I could see it better. So, mm-hmm, what's going on? But I found this movie on Amazon Prime Video Streaming. I'm sure it's available other places streaming as well as physical copy. Maybe VHS if you're lucky, if you're into that kind of thing. I like VHS and I have a whole bunch of them. Most of them are Disney movies from my childhood and like Three Ninjas Strike Back. I love that movie. Have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts on this movie? Upon like the first maybe five, ten minutes watching it, I immediately thought of my bud Brian because it's a crocodile movie and you know that the horror show host loves that shit. So I texted him and I was like, hey bud, you know. Um, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Do you know how the monkey died? Please let me know. What did I miss in the darkness? Mm -hmm. Throw me a bone here. Um, if you have not yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. Please don't forget to like the video if you did like the video, or you could like the video if you sympathize with wild animals, I guess. You should. They're pretty cool. Um, hit the notification bell for all further notifications of further uploads and live streams. Also, like the video if you enjoy redundancy. You can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. You can find my solo as well as reviews with the groom. He's not here. I'm always pointing. <laughs> Available on iTunes in podcast form. Thank you to the Farsighted Network. If you have not checked out their awesome creators, you should because they have even awesomer content. And um, it's going to be summer soon and we're all going to get eaten alive by mosquitoes if we're ever allowed back outside. I hope everyone's doing well and remember to turn their cell phones off before filming a video and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, what? What's that you say? Is that Beavis and Butthead as Ariel and Ursula on your t-shirt? It sure is. You're welcome. Enjoy.